trade center with a request for establish, establishing a endowment lecture in honor of Padma Sri Dr. Narla Thatharao, uh, honor life FI of the Institution of Engineers India. In persuasion to that, the elsewhere uh, Andhra Pradesh Trade Center held on 27th April 2000, Inamnas resolved to organize an endowment lecture in honor of the world energy expert, Padmasri Dr. Narla Tadharao, honor life FIE every year at our center, Hyderabad. In persuasion of the resolution of the Deed and Andhra Pradesh State Center, so far, 18 endowment lectures were organized in memory of the great engineer, uh, Dr. Narla Tata Rogaru, and delivered lectures by the persons of high eminence. I have pleasure to say a few words about Dr. Narla Tata Rao to the allied audience. Dr. Narla Tata Rao, born on September 4th, 1917, completed his BSc in Electrical and Mechanical Engineering from the Banaras Hindu University, Varanasi, and a diploma from Jamshedpur Technological Institute of the Tata Iron and Steel Company Limited, Jamshedpur. Then he did his MSc in the Solar Power Engineering from Illinois uh, Institute of Technology, Chicago, USA. The Jawaharlal Nehru Technological University, Hyderabad, the latter conferred on him, on him the honor degree of the Doctor of Science. Dr. Rao served the Madhya Pradesh Electricity Board from 1948 to 1972 in various capacity from right from the divisional engineer to uh, vice chairman. Dr. Tata Rao built the Madhya Pradesh Electricity Board as a Inuro organization. Uh, he then worked as a member of the Thermal during 1972-74 with the Center Water and Power Commission Government of India. Dr. Rao has also been the president of the Central Board of the Irrigation and Power, New Delhi during 1976-79, and the chairman of the National Council of Power Utilities during the 1982-88. He also served the Andhra Pradesh State Electricity Board as its chairman during 1974-88. Dr. Tata Rao became the Chinapnus <clears throat> to the energy sector in Andhra Pradesh. Dr. Tata Rao increased the installed capacity of the state grid by force by the conceiving the, uh, the generation projects like Vijayawada Thermal Station and uh, Nagarjun Sagar, Sri Shalam, and also Lower Sealer hydropower projects. He formed a strong base for the state electricity sector which is now considered the one of the best in the country. Dr. Rao also be chairman, Energy Research Committee of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, New Delhi, and uh, the chairman of the expert group of the development of power technology and planning commission, government of India, and also member of expert committee on the Enviro projects, government of Maharashtra, and also as a consultant to the Asian Development Bank on the reorganization of the Bangladesh Power Development Board. In 1992, he was the appointed as advisor on power to the uh, Honorable Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh. And also, he won the several awards at national and international levels, uh, also brought laurels to the engineering profession uh, and also motherland. Dr. Rao has been recipient of Golden Ghibli Award of uh, CBIP New Delhi for the year 1978, and President of India conferred, conferred on, him, on him the Padma Sri in 1983. He was also recipient of Bharat Ratna Sir M. Mokshagunda Vishweshwara Award, instituted by the government of Andhra Pradesh and the Institution of Engineers India, AP State Center in the year 1985, and Om Prakash Basun Award in the year 1986, and the IBUPL uh, your J uh, research foundation, Mumbai selected Rao as the energy man of the year for the 1995. The Institution of Engineers honored him with the uh, honorary life fellow of the Institution of Engineers in 1997 during the 12th Indian Engineering Congress 
which is held in bangalore dr tata rao always stood behind in us in all our endeavors such as the world energy congress uh, and dr tata rao always be used to mention that the honorable life of the fi conferred on him by the institution of engineers is higher than uh, any others honor we revered engineering legendary of uh, era dr nara tata rao who made laudable contribution in the power sector and brought laurels to the engineering profession the tributes we can pay to dr uh, narla tata rao is to emulate us his qualities and follow his uh, footsteps i am very happy to inform that the institution of engineers has entered its uh, uh, centenary year 13th september 2019 shortly uh, we are completing 100 years of its service in engineering advancement for uh, national buildings we invited intended to celebrate uh, this significant uh, milestone uh, with varied uh, uh, events in befitting manner on 13th september 2020 as as part of centenary celebration uh, telangana state center of institution of engineers organizing as uh, international conferences national seminars workshops with almost all engineering disciplines the main aim is to disseminate the latest knowledge uh, uh, in engineering technology to our engineering community uh, during uh, december 2019 the institution of engineers telangana state center organized uh, 34th indian engineering congress which held from 27 to 29 december 2019 at hyderabad which uh, culminated successfully and uh, earned laurels to the institution of engineers since we are all anxiously waiting to hear the talk from our eminent speakers i am limiting myself i hope uh, that we will be really enjoyed uh, their talks today with this few words once again i extend welcome to all of you for this endowment lecture thank you one and all now i am requesting i am requesting professor sri ramanjaneelu fie member institution of engineers telangana state center and a convener of this event please introduce the guest of honor engineer v vidya sagar to all the participants over to professor sri ramanjanacharya am i audible yes sir <laughs> respected chief guest and speaker engineer b sridhar mohan garu fie guest of honor speaker engineer you vidya sagar garu fie guest of honor and speaker engineer b pantare digaru fie and president of webinar function dr g rameshwara garu honorary secretary engineer t anjay garu and honorable or i is a tc committee member e sinochar garu family members of padmasi dr naran tatara garu and honorable council members and committee members and great participants and representatives of media namaskar in this evening that is 19th endowment lecture day evening of padma sri dr n tatara garu former legendary chairman in the history of our electrical power and apscb in special i have the pleasant privilege of to introduce to you all engineer you vidya sagar rao garu fie former chief general manager of telangana state south central south power distribution company limited he was born in hyderabad educated in dedal friends school alia junior college and usman engineering college till he got a degree in electrical engineering 
He completed his uh, post graduation in C computer science and engineering in 1986. He was appointed as a student engineer in APCB and retired in 2018 as a chief general manager of PSS DPG. He is currently visiting faculty for a good number of institutions in Hyderabad. He is doing research studies in hydroponics while serving the society. You, you might be aware hydroponics for gardening and farming has many advantages at the same time, dangers, especially with the salmonella, pathogens, pests, water and diversity combination, and etc. <laughs> so he is doing a very top job of history for the society. He is, as his name indicates, Vidya Plus Saga tells us <laughs> the education plus ocean. Ocean collects water from various flows and gives life to many. <laughs> he works hard, sincerely, and gives the solutions for doing good to many. He is a member of an energy conservation mission of our IATAC. So, Vijaya Sagargaru has, but I limit myself here to enable you all to hear from his room. I request you, I request the President Ji, Ramaseva Garu, to proceed further. Thank you all. So, thank you. Dr. Thank you, sir, Ramaseva Charles, sir. Thank you very much. Now, I am requesting Engineer Vidya Sagar to FIA. Thank, thank Please you. Uh, start your talk, sir. Over to Vidya Sagar, sir. Please start. Namaskaram. And good evening to all dignitaries and invitees, colleagues, friends, all the, all the outside invitees throughout the world. I invite all of you. It is my privilege to be with you all today. On the, and it, I feel it's a great opportunity for me. On the occasion of Doctor, the very legend, legendary figure of electricity, electricity sector of India, and not only India, even in the world, is Doctor, nothing but Doctor late Padmasri Narla Tataragar. I I also have very very good privilege to be here on this occasion because many many of the important people are here on this evening and this webinar and today electricity is very very important sector and i have also at the outset thanked our institution of engineers for inviting me to give a small lecture on this occasion. I also thank our professor Ramanujar Avaru for giving a, a very good introduction, which I may not be eligible for it. <laughs> you are eligible, sir. You are eligible, <laughs> Vidya Sagar. Vidya Sagar also there. Ah, yeah, yeah. So, thank you, thank you so much, sir, Ramanujar Garu. I, I, I thank our special special thanks to our Rameshwar Garu and also congratulations to Rameshwar Garu for uh, attending and uh, taking up a new assignment as a chairman and director of uh, ESKI, Engineering Staff College of India, Gashiboli. Thank you. So, As our uh, Professor Garu told, I had my about 32 years of service in APSCB. I joined in APSCB, as well APSCB as AE, and I was traveling in various ca capacities and cadres. And finally, in 2018, at about 
which are vast experience mainly in distribution companies power distribution sector i had about 32 years of experience and uh, recently 2018 i got retired so <clears throat> so uh, sir how much time uh, you have allocated me sir uh, only 15 minutes all at five minutes or 10 minutes there <laughs> so, so now now i have to run not to walk yes okay. uh, so thank you so much so today i have uh, opted a subject of safety aspects in power sector just a, a perspective safety aspects because uh, since uh, i have worked in uh, distribution side and transmission side i will be harping upon mainly on the distribution sector uh, <clears throat> you know that uh, electricity everybody knows in present scenario electricity is a basic need of mankind and we can't imagine our uh, lives without any power nowadays and we can also say always i used to tell panchabhutamulu like bhumi akashamu that is air sky water air and fire so along with that the sixth element we have to add now there is a dire need to add this also as electricity that is power and then <clears throat> at the same time it's very very powerful and it plays a very vital role in the ma mankind modern civilization uh, but on the other side of the coin we quickly jump because uh, i am given only 10 minutes time uh, i want to harp upon the hazards what what is the hazards from this electricity especially on the distribution side i used to uh, take much time on that and i used to spend among all the public and i i have i have seen a very bad accidents also unfortunately so with all these i was forced to give this particular what are the what are the importance of the safety at this sector so it's unfortunate to note that certain countries including india the death toll is very high because of the reasons all of us know that is lack of awareness of electrical hazards then usage of poor poor quality equipment improper training of power staff and private electricians unauthorized meddling of live lines by unauthorized people without any taking any proper lcs or so then in fact lct became the biggest life taker i was uh, just referring and uh, i was uh, looking at uh, surfing through the internet i got very interesting figures across the the number one life takers are road accidents per year in india there is a count of more than 1.5 lakhs deaths that is per year that is unimaginable and then i think after that immediate after that is a drowning cases water drowning in the water and the rivers lakes that amounts the second one but the third one it is electrical accidents nearly about 10000 people on an average in india are dying out of electrocutions or any other coming into contact 10000 people losing losing 10000 people in india it's something a very alarming and very disturbing also and it is actually a challenge to our power uh, power sector electrical engineers so it has to be addressed and redressed at least we have we can't avoid but we can minimize that's that's what i i am very confident enough we have interestingly another study by some uh, one of the engineering colleges from the north india in nakpo it is they have made an interesting uh, figure that is 36 percent of the deaths in between between the years that is the age of 21 to 30 years 
and 28% of the total deaths recorded as the age between 31 to 40 years age and 77% of the accidents are occurring almost almost 77% it is it is it is also again very disturbing that is they are the breadwinners in their families they are losing their lives another another horizontal and vertical uh, accident survey is there i will go through but electricians among all the electricians are concerned around 17.5 percent farmers are 14 percent laborers are 21 percent i am rounding it down and even students also 9.3 percent and they, they have given another interesting ratio of male and female ratios among all 84 cases that was 69 is to 15 percent of the ratio between male and female these are the death ratios it's a uh, of course, we may be we, we, we may be knowing about uh, electricity at what point uh, of uh, voltage level it is hazardous. That is up to one mea it may, it may be tinkling us, but up to above five m that is that is milliamps above five milliamps we start irregular heartbeats leading to cardiac arrest also. We all know, but for the sake of just for brushing, the, uh, the causes, major causes, main causes for the electrical accident, the, the direct contact with the live wires, snapping of overhead lines across the, across the roads, then insufficient OH line clearances, because sometimes I have seen personally the roads over a, over a period of time, the roads going on increasing its levels. But the crossing of wires, the sagging also going on increasing. So road road uh, road level will be increasing, and sagging is coming down. The clearances will be very shortened. These are very 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 alarming, and these are the points to be offered by by our uh, electricity staff, line staff, and field engineers. Negligence, negligence of uh, line staff is also the major portion. Unauthorized line works, defective appliances, and then not using safety equipment. Our people, they are uh, either very lethargic or maybe overconfident. I got uh, 30 years of service, sir. I got 20 years of service, sir. I don't, I don't want any helmet. I don't want any safety belt. I don't want to wear any uh, safety belt. These, these are the generally comments what they do. So this this comes under overconfidence. And overconfidence is also claimed the life. That we have seen practically. Then there must be proper training also. So sufficient proper, uh, sufficient training also should be given to these line staff. Leakage of currents, electrical motors, Unbalanced current. This is this this one uh, I have seen in the field personally. When there is unbalanced current in the distribution transformer, there will be a huge current flowing at the neutral point. If something goes there, somebody goes there, or uh, somebody come into contact, some animal come into contact, it dies. Generally, it goes oversight by our staff. And another culprit is earthing. Yeah, Improper earthing. That is also very, very bad. Even uh, we have a very bad practice, though it is a code, electricity code. While giving the services to the, uh, uh, especially domestic services, our people are not checking whether there is a proper earthing, earthing pits, earth pits are given, proper earth practice have, have, have already been followed, observed or not. These things are they are not, they are unable to see, they are, they, they are simply forgetting about it. Actually, these are the very, very important and vital points nowadays. Neglecting air practices while releasing the domestic service is one. Then non-usage of MCBs in rural and slum areas. 
they are directly giving without any mcbs they are directly directly giving this services and they are using to the gadgets utility these are the very dangerous situation we are creating in the rural area and then another alarming thing is farmers attending attempting repairs on dtrs and the are, are uh, they are they are attempting to replace the fuses on themselves of course there is another problem with them the unit are unable to uh, provide the number of line staff there in each and every because there are maybe many reasons but they 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 have to compulsorily see whether we can reduce those things and uh, averting those important because as as I, as i said earlier about 14% of the people out of 100 every year in india they are farmers so they i request all our eminent engineers electrical engineers retired engineers to interfere intervene at that point and do some remote control uh, operations or develop some black box where we can avoid the interference of farmer directly to the transformer or to the fuses at the field level that's my request okay vijay sir sir uh, time is please uh, you can take, okay. finish within few minutes okay so safety policies there is a, even in generating station there is a safety manual safety books are there which are to be followed scrupulously so somehow unfortunate things are happening and then implementation and monitoring is very very essential adequate uh, creating awareness even among the public and this say on safety that is also very very important conducting mock drills that is also important then budget also should be provided for the safety measures for each and every utility periodical review by the management on safety aspects this is also very very important and compliance of norms for the clearances as all we know as electrical engineers the conductors overhead lines for low medium and uh, higher voltages like about 90 feet 20 feet 18 feet across the roads there is a different along the road different those things have to be complied survey and check up investigate those things whether the safety norms have been totally complied with or not yes yeah, sir please uh, conclude sir ah yeah yeah one minute one minute sir important and safety awareness to the public is uh, very very essential especially in rainy season we are seeing so many general public in uh, on roads or in the common uh, areas where uh, uh, theaters cinema theaters or uh, uh, mosques churches at places where people conglomerate congregate so there there are so many accidents occurred earlier in many places so especially in rainy seasons there must be huge publicity must be there in all social media and, and uh, on tvs also that's a, a sort of recommendation then fire tendering fire fire accidents are uh, happening now and then even in stores material stores also and uh, we have recommended while in service to ensure the material available in the stores at the same time substations are equipped with the uh, fire fighting equipment but at sometimes at some places uh, there there has been a, a slight negligence is found like uh, sand sand, uh, uh, sand buckets are available but uh, sand will not be available so there there should be like that in case of emergencies 
our uh, people and the staff also should be trained in such a way gps location should be shared even to the fire engine and fire tendering staff so that they can come directly to that place with the, with the help of gps because we have to use the latest facilities technology facilities we have to focus upon uh, nowadays we are not seeing any danger danger boards also danger sign boards at the transformers at all establishments of the electrical establishments and on the roads which are uh, people uh, move close by to them they are very essential then <clears throat> and another another thing in uh, especially in uh, south india what i have seen cradle guard is not being uh, there is no practice to use the cradle guard across the roads protect the overhead uh, crossing overhead conductors for overhead conductor there must be a cradle guard to save guard the commuters of the road that is uh, not that also should be provided sir yes sir sir please uh, conclude sir please ah uh, yeah it's over uh, then uh, one minute sir the way forward what i tell is we have to implement the latest technologies we have to bring in the latest technologies into our power sector such as we have seen in uh, usa and other countries european countries drones drone technology is being used for line patrolling especially in the transmission lines are concerned for studying and to get the close up to the live live line then surveillance cameras in substations phd substations also required hotline technologies can be introduced even in the distribution side sub transmission levels also satellite kv lines especially and the distribution side thermo vision cameras should be used widespread because they can detect the hot spots special on the bus bars in the substations then sensors also can be used for for tagging this uh, uc cable joints and problem then range finders this is separate uh, this one then uh, insulated tree pruners are uh, now available in the market then similarly insulated insulated mobile vans also available a uh, safety codes what i just tell safety is very very important and uh, human errors in power systems are like hidden land mines it explodes at any time of if any human error is there then always we should expect the unexpected any unexpected we, we have to expect that is a, that is our engineering skill data is the core and handling handling of the data is our power instead of run to fail for any equipment we have to replace or attend the repair for the, or replace the old machine to avoid accidents at any time conclude sir rameshwar garu yes yes sir half an hour half an hour is over sir i i, I we, we, shall, we have to respect the value we respect the value of the life of each and every person which is very important in the family of chain of the society mitigate the electrical accidents since the majority of deaths are of breadwinners and their families would be left orphans utility should focus more on avoiding electrical accidents rather than spending on compensation let us all hope for a day of safe and secure life thank you very much sir thank you thank you very much sir you are explain the safety experts in power sector really thank you very much be you be the please give the big round of applause for the vidya sagar now i am requesting uh, engineer t anjaya fi please introduce our guest of honor engineer k pedareddy very shortly very short please sir what anjay sir okay you are audible please i am audible sir yes sir yes before yeah, yeah. Mm. i am now first reading the bio data of sri penta reddy k penta reddy bsc special b electrical usman university professional qualification worked in ap genco erstwhile apscb for 30 years from 1970 to 2002 from ae to sc and worked as a special officer from 2002 to 2004 present position retired as special officer slbc amrp 
lift scheme in 2002 and at present working as advisor lift litigation schemes, INCDA, Government of Telangana. The experience has a extensive experience in formulation and implementation of mm -hmm. hydro power projects, lift litigation schemes, and EHT substations in design, procurement, monitoring of e and equipment for hydroelectric power stations and pumping stations of major lift litigation schemes, substation, and transmission lines. Associate for design preparation of layouts, monitoring, erection, testing, and commissioning works of hydroelectric power plants, about 11 numbers. Naganusaga hydroelectric power project, G Salem Right Canal hydroelectric power project, Naganusaga Right Bank Canal hydroelectric project, Naganusaga Left Bank Canal hydroelectric project, project Pochampa Left Bank Canal hydroelectric project, Penna Ahobalam. Hydroelectric project, Upper Sileru Hydroelectric project, Vijeshwaram Gas Power Station, Sri Salem Left Bank Underground Hydroelectric project, Donkaraya Hydroelectric Power project, Singuru Hydroelectric project, Lift Irrigation Schemes, the AMRP Lift Irrigation Scheme 4 into 18 megawatts, as Special Officer in AP Genco, present TS Genco. Associated as consultant for preparation of DPRs, execution of e and equipment, EST lines and substation for following liquidification projects. Galvakurti liquidification scheme, three stages. Each stage is 5 into 30 megawatt pump motor sets. Net empower liquidification scheme, two stages. Stage 1, 4 into 17 megawatts, and stage 2, 3 into 17 megawatts pump sets. Bima liquidification scheme, Two stages, stage one with 3 to 12 megawatts and stage two with 3 to 4 megawatts pump motors. BIMA lift to scheme, two stages, stage one, 3 to 17 megawatts and stage two, 3 to 4 megawatts. Coil Sagar lift to scheme, two stages, first stage, 2 into 7.5 megawatts and stage two, 2 into 7.5 megawatts. AMRP low level canal. Lift scheme 3 into 4 megawatts. Preparation of DR, DPR of pumping station of Palamur Rangari lift scheme. Three stages. Stage 1, 32 into 145 megawatts, 89 cubic meters, and 135 meters height. Stage 2, with 4 into 145 megawatts, and stage 3, 4 into 100 megawatts pump motors. These are under completion. Training and visits to other countries. Mr. Pentare Digaru went to Japan uh, for six months on hydro turbine controls, hydro turbine, hydro turbine, gas government, government equipment. He stayed Japan for four times in connection with reversible turbine units and visited China for four times in connection with Orissa hydroelectric power projects. Papers presented, presented papers for CBIP on mini hydro stations, pumping station, protection and control equipment. Present papers on lift irrigation scheme, formulation and implementation. Kalvakurti project, world coalition project. That is the world biggest lift scheme. He has done highest uh, yeah. pump in the world is Highest rating 139 megawatts and maximum height is 120 meters. Mag maximum discharge 3200 QSEX. Number of pumps 58 pumps throughout that coalition project that is varying from 30 megawatts to 139 megawatts from Meligadda to Kundapochama. That is 2 TMC per day. Now it is resigned to 3 TMC per day. The printer rate is, is very hard working and he has spent for all these projects day, day and night at site only. Nearly as a worker with the self uh, uh, spanner and with the of certain assistance of the people, he used to come and see until the project proposed his commission in all respect and testing. So he, he never took any chance. 
that's why it, throughout Telangana state, wherever the services are required for this reparation, for any um, disturbance, he is going and attending. So that is. The... Okay, thank you, Anjay sir. We explained very well, including the scheme also. We explained it. Thank you. Now I'm requesting you. the Pendarad sir, uh, uh, Pendarad advisor at the lift irrigation, uh, irrigation and care department, to please start your talk, sir. Go to Pendarad sir. I'm able to. Are you able to hear, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Now I give, I'm thankful to Institute of Engineers for giving an opportunity to participate in the Tatarawar Environment Lecture. And uh, really, it's a very good opportunity for me, and I'm very happy for this uh, uh, situation. Now, I got an opportunity to work under Tata Rao directly. That is my Tata Rao blessings were there all the time. AMRP project to formulation time, he was the, my guide, and he was advisor at the time. And he was guide, he, I traveled with him to this project for at least 10 times, 20 times. I got an opportunity to discuss various technical issues. I learned a lot and he's a very great eminent engineer. I can never imagine any person can come that level. That is my experience at Peeling, sir. Coming back to my experience, another thing, I think as everybody knows that the AMRP is the first pumping station which has been formulated and implemented. And I got opportunity for formulation, implementation, execution, and operation also for six months. That is very lucky opportunity for given to me by the government of uh, the then government of Andhra Pradesh and electricity board officials, chairman and others. And Tatara was the advisor to that project on that day, those days. And after that, I retired in 2000 after completing the project. I got an opportunity to work on CCLM underground project, pumping that is the biggest 145, 150 megawatts reversible turbine pumps. That's what the very big pumping uh, generating stations plus reversible turbine is that is pumping station also. Now, coming back to lift irrigation schemes, with that experience of AMRP, which is a role model pumping station, there are four pumps of 18 megawatts with single lift, single stage pumping, 100 meters pumping. And everybody was not agreeing to accept that such pumping station can be implemented. But anyhow, God's blessings and all the people, see, people like all your eminent engineers who are participating in this meeting. Very nice, we could complete that job. And after that, I got an opportunity to work as a consultant for all the lift irrigation schemes of Telangana. Whether officially or unofficially, I, my contribution is there for all the projects. After this, I've been appointed as advisor to the government of Telangana after formation of Telangana State. I'm lucky to work under guidance of under eminent chief minister. And with a very vision, whose vision is very long vision and which we cannot imagine how long a vision thinks of it and how he has implemented Kaleshwaram. And I got an opportunity to, the, to work in that. Basically, Kaleshwaram project, one important thing I want to point out uh, for all our engineers, here now the present day pumping stations, we are using Francis turbine pumps. Francis turbine pump only suitable for any year and any discharge, any rating. Kaleshwaram project 139 megawatts, the first of its kind in, in world, not only India, Asia, world, and highest state pumping is 120 meters, as Anjaya sub just now telling that, and discharge of 3,200 cubic discharge, discharge. When we are running the four pumps, we are, when our CM as we have seen in the camera, and he was uh, thinking that flood water is coming, something, some damage uh, got uh, gave away, away. That's the reason he was telling me, is it flood water or pump water? I said, plump water. Oh, so much water. That is the situation. Even anybody sees that canal flow, really definitely we feel that say flood water flow and that is the opportunity this now basically the Kaleshwaram pumping station is a ideal role model system formulated by our chief minister Garu, and i got an opportunity to implement all pumping stations i have associated with every pump and every first pump has been commissioned in my presence after working with all engineers all irrigation engineers really i'm thankful to them their cooperation is very high now our irrigation engineers, I can say, that the best engineers in case of pumping stations in India. Now they can guide any engineer, any irrigation engineer in our country totally now. Coming back to other pumping stations, now Palamur is the pumping station now is under, it's just started, of course, it started a long back, five years back because of some other problems, as you know, everybody funds problem, that's other things. And because it's tribunal problems, so many things, we cannot continue. However, civil works have been completed. 
most probably electrical works now we are starting and pumps and motors are expected shortly maybe another 6 months and we complete this project for information of the all engineers of particular telangana engineers south telangana engineers i said the palamur pump engineers will definitely come maybe another one year one and a half year and everybody is getting doubts that palamur will come or not yes definitely it will come because this pumping station pump rated with the best pumps of bhl bhopal make all the pumps which are of high rating are bhl make only the small pumps of 30 megawatts 40 megawatts we are importing here and there because of the number of pumps are more and bhl was not able to cope up with the so many pumps manufacturing this reason we have selected high rating pumps more than 100 megawatts i can say have been given to bhl less than 100 megawatts of 30 megawatts 40 megawatts 50 megawatts 25 megawatts all these things on present days they are given to other countries like andich or uh, this jailam uh, other country people now presently we are sitaram electricity scheme 40 megawatts pumps are there there we have imported from china but anyhow you know, i am sure that andich pumps are working nicely sitaram pumps also china pumps also they are working nicely they are going to work nicely most probably shortly uh, december so we are commissioner sitaram also now total pumping is in telangana state as in today 78 numbers and total pumps there are 380 pumps 380 pump pumps now already in service are constantly and the 10 pumps are yet to come and this pumping is so many pumping stations of course this is a tremendous uh, uh, top job for irrigation is to handle operate with these pumping stations or same is also reorganizing things and the irrigation department is totally reorganizing we got to take care of all these irrigation requirements as well as pumping station operation requirement this is a small information i can share with you sir but any anyway, lot of information but technical requirement but it's time is too short thank you very much sir you have opportunity you. this way thank, thank you sir. very much pandarad sir thank you very much sir. you really you did the job. great job in the irrigation department like kalesham and other pumping stations sir uh, thank you thank you very much and thank please you, give the big round of applause to our uh, Thank you, sir. Director. Now I am requesting the engineer E. Sinwasa Chari F. I. A chairman E. C. M. and member Telangana State Center. And uh, I will please introduce the today's chief guest, uh, engineer B. Surendra Mohan F. I. Farmer, chairman and managing director. Over to Sinwasa Chari. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening to all. Uh, respected chairman, Mr. B. Nis, Dr. Uh, uh, Rabesh Rao Garu, and the honorary secretary Ajay Garu. And uh, today's chief guest will be Surendra Mohan Garu, and uh, uh, other guests are Panal uh, Pentaretti Garu, Vijay Sagar Rao Garu, and uh, part part pen uh, relatives of Nala Tata Rao Garu, and uh, part pen all the part pen. Good evening again. Uh, I feel happy to meet you all of you at the occasion of Padma Sri Nala Tata Rao Endowment Lecture. Uh, as said by our chairman, it's my duty to introduce today's. Uh, chief guest sri surendra mohan rao garu to the participants uh this surendra mohan garu is a former chairman com managing director naiveli lignite corporation limited he is also a uh, chairman Nai- uh, nlc naiveli lignite corporation tamil nadu power limited and also he worked as naiveli uttar pradesh power limited he studied b in mining from usmania Later, master certificate in competency, uh, done work, and the PG uh, PG DBA uh, in 1998. His work is a work experience work. He initially joined in Western Coal Field of Coal India Limited. After that, briefly he worked in Root Scale of Steel Plant of Steel Authority of India Limited. Later, he joined in Rostia Export Nigam Limited, Vishakha Patnam Steel Plant. He worked as a miner, a mine manager of fully mechanized capital, uh, a open cast mine of dolomite limestone situated at Kamam, Jagdalpeta, continued till December 1997. Later, he joined in Navy Lignite Corporation as a deputy manager, and uh, he is elevated to the post of chief general manager. Uh, later, he was appointed as a director of mines by the then the then president of India. So, and also in 2012, he was appointed as a chairman from managing director of Naivali Lignite Corporation by the President of India. 
he, he retired from the service uh, as a chairman, managing director. His major contribution was, uh, he, uh, was during his tenure, he acquired uh, land acquisition more than 1,100 uh, hectares and also highest ever lignite production over button removal during every year of his tenure. He played a major role in, in the commissioning of mine one year project capacity three MTP mine two expansion project of capacity four point five MTPA in Bhatinagar mine in Rajasthan. He habitually handled labor issues and managed production during severe cyclonic storms and heavy rainfall. His contribution as a chairman and managing director was highest ever profit total income in the history of the company, amounting to fifteen hundred seventy nine course to 7,000 course, respectively, comparing to the previous year. Commissioning of Tampara project, project 2 into 250 megawatts with the CFDC technology, which is the first ever in the country. It also uh, commissioned a 51 power plant 2 into 500 megawatts, which is the first ever coal based power plant in the history of company. During its tenure, the power as a chairman, managing director, power generation capacity increased from 2,740 megawatt to 4,301 megawatt. Under his tenure, NLC diversified into renewable forms of power like solar and wind. Uh, with this, I thank uh, IEA and also over to President uh, and the chairman, Dr. Vavish Tagaru, for further proceeding. Thank you, Charit. Thank you. Now I am requesting Engineer B. Surendra Mohan FI. Please start your talk, sir. Yeah, good evening, everybody. I'm really happy to participate in today's uh, this lecture of, uh, in honor of Dr. Narla Tatarawaru. He's a very well-known person. He was uh, known for his uh, contribution for the electrical sector of uh, the, not only for the combined of Andhra Pradesh, but also for the country. And uh, I've got a small uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation. I would like to present that. Can I share this now? Yes, yes. How to share? Patna? Screen share, Jane. Ratna? Is there now? Ratna? Are you able to see my skills now? Ratna, Ratna. Surendra Mohan sir, give screen share, Jay. Yes, sir, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Screen kill and mirror. Share, share screen kill and day. Click Jay and Akra. 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 Click Jay and Explain are you able to see it now? Sir, your screen is here. I'll go back to the back of the screen. I'll go back to the screen. Mundo, you can see the Zoom logo on the bottom of the chart. Share the screen and the share screen. Okay, put just the screen. Share screen. Can you see the share screen? Yes, share screen. Can you see the share screen? Yes. Can you see the share screen? I put a piece on the okay, fine. You would have a full screen, but only full screen. I can't do that. 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 I can't do Okay. 
जी आई हैव दी टॉपिक वन वाज फॉर मी इज पावर सिनेरियो इन इंडिया एज एन 31 जुलाई इंडिया एज ए इंस्टॉल कैपेसिटी ऑफ 371.97 गीगावाट्स एज वन बिलो बेस्ड ऑन द कोल दिस थिंग कोल 205.954 गीगावाट्स रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी सोर्सेज इज अब 88.042 हाइड्रो इज 45.69 गीगावाट्स गैस एंड डीजल 25.5 Nuclear 6.78. Total 371.9 gigawatts is the total entire uh, uh, capacity of the power in India. From the above, it is seen that coal has dominated with 50 percent, are followed by renewable services, 23 percent, hydro at 12 percent, gas and diesel together at 7 percent, and the remaining 2 percent consisting of the nuclear energy. How the in, uh, power sector has gone from the ninth plan was just I given here. From ninth plan onwards to the present, up to July 20, if you see, based on mainly coal sector has grown very rapidly. That is, it was 6,000, uh, 6,130 megawatt in the ninth plan, and now it has come up to uh, 2 lakh 5,094 megawatt at the end of July 2020. Similarly, hydro uh, this uh, renewable also renewable also has, has grown up very rapidly. It was only 1,000 megawatt. It has come to 88,000 megawatt by end of July 20. so this is the condition so there is lot of good growth in uh, coal and also in the uh, power uh, in the uh, uh, res services then if you see all india king capacity of power stations as on 31st july northern region western region southern region eastern region and i like everything everything uh, if you see the coal is northern region total comes to around all india it comes to around 19 1 lakh 19500 megawatts Is the power of the coal, and uh, lignite comes to 660 megawatt. If you see lignite, it is in southern southern region. It is 3240 megawatt. This is being shared by only uh, NLC, Navali, because southern region uh, Navali is there, and Navali has stopped some 250 megawatt because of the old uh, thermal stations, nuclear, hydro, and RES. Total again comes to 371.97 gigawatts. current coal uh, coal sector status what is that means the coal in the coal is the mainstay of india's energy over 75% of electricity generation and 50% of primary energy are coal based steel cement fertilizer ceramics paper etc are large consumers of coal after power coal share in the power capacity is declining from 60% in 2014-15 to 50% in 2019-20 while uh, renewable energy sources share has gone up From 14% in 2014-15 to 23% in 2019-20. Resource-wise, India ranks fifth in the world with about 1.6 billion tons of major resources coal. India is second largest coal producer globally after China with about 730 million tons of production achieved in 2019-20 and consumption was about 970 million tons. India imported about 230 million tons of coal, 24% of consumption during the period. GOA Government of India wants to reduce the imports of the thermal coal. by increasing by increasing the domestic coal production this could be possible that the sector is now opened for commercial coal coal mining recently despite the efforts uh, the sure the renewable energy india is expected to depend on coal for significant portion of electricity generation for another 20 years all in the yearly coal consumption if you see right from 2015 onwards it was for 530 million tons but now by 2020 it is 62 billion tons for coal consumption has increased from the last 15 years 5 years all india per capita consumption of electricity also it is only 357 megawatt hours in the beginning 2014 now it has come to 1181 kilowatt hours all india energy generation during april 20 to july 20 for this uh, uh, financial year to see the annual targets for 2021 is is 13 lakhs 30000 million units of all put together thermal hydro and all that but the target for this uh, up to july 2020 is is uh, thermal is 44 lakhs 2690 megawatt achievement is 3 lakh 84000 whereas hydro it is 50156 achieved is 15000 to 83 it is actually more hydro achieved more nuclear also achieved more and total for india is Up to this target of twenty is four lakh seventy thousand two hundred fifty-one. Achieved is three lakh eighty-seven one fifty-one. 
I think thermal is mainly less because of the less demand for the last two, three, four, five months. Demand is less because of the lockdown period. Transmission sector one of the largest operational and integrated grids. The huge investments in high voltage lines and substations. As of the November 2019, Indian transmission system includes 4 lakh 20,400 CKM circuit kilometers of transmission network, 9 lakh 14,000 of MVA of transmission capacity, 1 lakh 550 megawatt of national grid inter-regional capacity. According to Energy Statistics 2019. In this sector, always have been a predominant consumer of electricity within the consumption matrix of India. Of the total consumption of electricity in India in 2018, industry sector accounted for 42 percent, followed by domestic sector 24 percent, agriculture 18 percent, commercial sector 9 percent, and southern percent by others. Indian power sector is facing the impact of lockdown, which has led to fall demand from high-paying customers such as industrial users, Indian railway, etc. Coal production needs to be ramped up by both public and private sector in a time-bound manner to meet the requirement of power plants. There is a need to develop an optimal fuel mix of both conventional and non-conventional forms of energy. Strengthening of transmission infrastructure to meet up the increased power generation capacities, including uh, ambitious uh, uh, renewable targets. Outstanding power use of utilities, principal such as payable to CPSU central power sector units, as of the 31st May is at 20 is about 51 crores. Renewable energy resources. If you see here, breakup of power in of rural India as of 31st July 2020 is going below. Small hydro power is 4,712 megawatt, and wind power is 3,700 megawatt. Bio power is 9,930 megawatt. Waste energy 148 megawatt. Solar power 3,500 megawatt. Total capacity is 88.042 gigawatts. Among the sources, the key contributor was wind energy with 10% share in total installed capacity, followed by solar energy, biomass energy, and other resources. 175 gigawatt target of RE capacity addition by 2022 gave a huge investment boost. Globally, India ranks fourth in the wind yeah, power, fifth in the solar. Yeah. Weighted average solar tariff rupees per kilowatt hour was 12 rupees per paisa in the year 2011. Solar tariff it has come down to 6.3, 6 rupees 3 paisa. In the year 2015, and drastically fall down to 250 paisa in the year 2019. Solar prices have dropped by about 80 percent in India between 2010 and 2019, whereas average coal prices continued to be around 350 R to be 4 to 5 rupees per unit. Huge tariff differential declines in solar and wind are posing competition for the coal base. Capital cost declines evident in solar PV minus 70 percent reduced since 2010. Onshore wind also 20 percent reduced. Battery solar also 50 percent. These are the good indicators for the going for renewable energy sources. Contracting capacity, Telangana state coming to Telangana state. I want to give some idea of Telangana also. It is state sector, and then TS Genco is 5,600 megawatt. Single unit TPP 1,200 megawatt. Chhattisgarh power 1,000 megawatt. Interstate hydro services megawatt. Gas EPL is 25 megawatt. 8,600 megawatt. Then further central sector share is 2,500 megawatt. Private sector, solar, NC, other base totally comes to. 16,220 megawatt is the contract capacity of Telangana state. And Telangana state, some projects are under construction. Badadri, 4,400 megawatt. NTPC, 5,800 megawatt. And SCCL, 1,800 megawatt. Solar target, 5,000 is target for Telangana, but they already achieved 1,039. So balance only 1,000 left out now. Out of 5,000, 3,000, 3,000, 3,000 is completed. Balance only 1,000 is available now. Yadadi is about 4,000 megawatt, 5,800 megawatt. Central generating stations is 8,800 megawatt. Total is 11,500 megawatt is under the construction stage of the Telangana state. TS Genco, they have also got thermal, hydro, and solar. Total coming to 5,700.2 megawatt. Whereas Singareni is having 1,200 megawatt, and Telangana state solar capacity is 3,700 megawatt. Since I work in LND in NLC Inda Limited, I wanted to just share a small uh, glimpse about NLC Inda Limited. The is a Navratna company under the Ministry of Coal, Government of India, and the present power generation is, uh, if you see, lignite-based fuel. It is 3,640 megawatt, coal-based 1,000 megawatt, solar 1,300 megawatt, wind 1,000 megawatt. Totally 6,400 megawatt. Now it is running in NLC India at Navelli and also other places. And mines, we have got three mines, four mines totally. At nearly three mines, India, and also one mine in Rajasthan. Mine one is the 10.5, mine two is 
mine one is dream lantern mine mine two is dream lantern mine but since there is rajasthan it is uh, two per meter total three or 30 points meter is the capacity of the mines in the navel and apart from that we are having a jee jee with, JV, with uh, gatampur that is uttar pradesh rashtriya utpad uh, the nigam limited that we are having a jee jee company with uh, up and there we are having 3 megawatt nitrogen megawatt is advanced stage of construction now it may commence any time in within 2 years and coal mining also we have entered navel was only meant for lignite but we have also entered into the coal mining capacity and coal mining capacity has now increased to 31 megawatts per annum talibara 2 and 3 coal blocks it is uh, allowed in orissa allotted to nlc and it's 30 megawatts capacity and pachwara south coal blocks it is in chatisgarh in the jharkhand district it is jharkhand state it is 11 megawatts per annum thank you for the opportunity given to you i am really thankful to dr rajesh ramesh garu and entire his team for organizing such a very wonderful webinar on uh, in honor of our uh, dr narla tata rao who was a famous figure and really it is alpha and i am also happy to hear these lectures from our uh, speakers mr vidya sagar and also mr venter reddy who are very much uh, in the limelight particularly in the uh, our telangana from the telangana state they are very much in limelight in the, in the growth of our telangana state in the post sector i once again thank Uh, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you very much sir thank you very much sir thank you very much sir i have taken more time no 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 so you are taken you are taken, you are taken yeah. correct sir uh, okay okay thank you sir now i am requesting our engineer t anjay please propose a whatsapp thanks thank you over to t anjay uh, sir am i audible sir ah uh, yes you are audible uh, sir ah uh, sir <clears throat> good evening sir <clears throat> respected chief guest guest of honor distinguished guests council members past chairman of iai committee members of iai tsc fellow patriot family members of dr nala tata rao garu media friends ladies and gentlemen it gives me immense pleasure to perform the pleasant duty of proposing vote of thanks on behalf of ap state center of iai i convey our sincere ap ga telangana state center <laughs> sorry i convey our sincere and profound thanks to engineer b surendra mohan fi former chairman and managing director nlc india for having graced the occasion as chief guest on the eve of the endowment lecture are nice to pay tributes to engineers statement dr nala tata rao a, leg, a legend in power sector of this country and delivered a endowment lecture on power scenario in india in a lucid way i also thank engineer k pentaredi advisor to lift irrigation schemes government of telangana graced the occasion as guest of honor and delivered a lecture on formation of formulation of present day pumping station and engineer u vidya sagar former chief general manager tss pdcl graced the occasion as guest of honor and delivered a lecture on safety aspects in power sector a prospect to a very informative and educative i also convey our thanks to engineer e srino sachari garu briefed about the chief guest of today's evening i also convey thanks to professor c ramanjya charu garu who briefed about the guest of honor engineer vidya sagar garu i convey our thanks to the guest fellow patriotic budding engineers and who made it convenient to be with us in paying respects to dr nala tata rao wonderful life fi thank you one and all sir thank you now we are uh, the closing sir because of janagana mana also we are not because of uh, our president of india the kerala lal hmm? no janagana mana sir thank you sir now we are closing thank you very much thank you thank you very much to all thank you thanks sir thank, thank you nice thank you thank you and excellent program conducted bye sir uh, Today we are seeing the Gangadhar sir. Mr. Matade Bala sir, Gangadhar sir, Gangadhar sir. Sorry, my report can be sooner. Maago, my peer marching, peer bed goal is sir. 
our gangadhar sir is the son of our nala tata rao sir sir you want to say any words now you can say sir no problem sir yeah you can say now what is your please sir yes sir meru unmute cheskondi sir unmute cheskondi sir mana sir me unmute cheskovali unmute cheskovali gangadhar sir rasam rasam cheyandi sir ఆ చేసి ఇప్పుడు మాట్లాడండి సార్ వీడియో పెట్టండి మీరు ఇంకొకటి బంద్ చేయండి సార్ రెండు ఉన్నాయి ఒకటి బంద్ చేయండి కెన్ యూ హెమీ నౌ సార్ ఎస్ సార్ వెరీ క్లియర్ సార్ హలో వినిపిస్తు సార్ కెన్ యూ హెమీ నౌ సార్ ఎస్ సార్ ఎస్ సార్ ఎస్ సార్ hello yes sir yes hello. sir proceed sir yes very uh, clear sir uh, unfortunately i have a very old computer it doesn't have a <laughs> video or a mic and uh, it's not extremely convenient uh, uh, to say a few words using this phone uh, video but um, if you can hear me i would just like to express my thanks to everyone who organized uh, uh, this memo- <coughs> this endowment lecture i am particularly thankful to you sir, sir rameshwar rao garu for the excellent way in which he organized this uh, i think this is one of the best seminars that have been conducted so far it's much better than the in person one here people from different places can join i am sure this will become the way of conducting seminars in future i am grateful to sri uh, surendra mohan garu for the excellent presentation on the on the coal sector it is the essence uh, of our uh, uh, as father used to say electricity is uh, the heart of the country it runs it is the most um, vital resource uh, of the country and to make electricity available coal is a very important source and uh, uh, the way mr surendra mohan garu presented the importance of coal in electricity generation is really remarkable i thank him for his excellent presentation i also thank mr vidya sagar garu for the importance of safety in electricity uh, as electricity is now approaching every nick and corner of the country it's important that the safety rules are followed to save precious life i am also thankful to sri penta reddy for giving an excellent presentation on the lift irrigation scheme you know in the present situation with the broader conflict that we are having in china china has having food scarcity and it's importing food while we in india who used to import food in the 50s are now surplus it is thanks to the effort of engineers like uh, mr penta reddy who's making lift irrigation available to all the farmers so that they can increase the, the food production in the country it is because of them we are not having any food shortages or any starvation death in the country i am extremely grateful to all of you for the excellent way the seminar was organized my gratitude to one and all thank you sir thank you thank you thank you, thank you, you sir thank, thank, thank you sir glad to join us sir uh, one more chari tomorrow we are having the teachers day Uh, yes. for teachers day tomorrow your chief guest is the uh, uh, professor murthy iit hyderabad and yes. the guest of honor is uh, triple it uh, krishna reddy garu and also from j into is gordan and usmania is uh, uh, professor kumar and uh, nit warangal ramana rao garu all the th- iit and uh, nit triple it usmania j into all professors are joining tomorrow for teachers day the teachers day we want to be felicitate one of the Uh, eminent uh, person in the teaching field teaching a uh, professor engineer uh, the professor babura but uh, because of uh, this webinar and all things we will one day again we will call into our institution during uh, any function we will felicitate him but i uh, once again i am requesting to all of you please join tomorrow program also at 5 pm at 5 pm tomorrow okay sir okay sir good day to all thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all thank you, people thank you sir. nice to participate in this thank you thank you vidya sir thank sir you. thank you pendarad sir thank, thank you sir. sir especially thanks to all very much sir thank you sir
Okay, sir. Thank you. Goodbye.